The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow or the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me. You take good Good morning, church. I hope you're having a blessed day today. Today we are finishing Matthew chapter 24. It's our sixth day on Matthew 24, and we're taking quite a long time to go through it. And I just want to really take the time to go through it piece by piece because Matthew 24 and Matthew 25 is Jesus' greatest teaching on the biblical end times. It's his, it's, his, it's his most detailed and comprehensive teaching on the end time narrative. Now, next week, we're going to start looking at Matthew 25. And after we look at Matthew 25, then we're going to look at the harmony of these two chapters out of Luke chapter uh, 21, Mark chapter 13, and a little bit of Luke chapter 12. So we're going to read those chapters later next week to kind of culminate and bring the harmony into play when it comes to these chapters. But Matthew 24 and 25 moves my heart so greatly. The more I study it, the more I understand it. And I've been going pretty hard in these lessons this week, uh, getting fired up. So today I'm going to try to not yell and get as loud as I have been. I'm going to try to just give you more of a pastoral lesson because the parable of the faithful and wicked servant I've talked about before. This is not the first time I've talked about this parable. And if you want to just look it up on our YouTube channel, you can look up Parable of Faithful and Wicked Servant. That's what it's titled. And you can go and watch more teaching on this. But I just want to take some time today to read through it. And then we're going to give some understanding on this. And we're going to talk about delays versus long suffering. And why is there such a difference in the two? Because understanding God's long-suffering and understanding the difference between a long-suffering and a delay will bring in the full revelation of what I finished with yesterday. Yesterday I talked about the revelation of the days of Noah. And I explained that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. It's our part to play in the story. But even more, the part I didn't get to yesterday, because I'm going to get to it today, is not only does it say that Noah is a preacher of righteousness, it says it was because of the long suffering of God in the days of Noah. So there's even more understanding of what we call long suffering. So what we're going to do today is we're going to pray. Then we're going to read the passage and we're going to talk about it for a little bit. And like I said, I've got many, many more teachings on both long suffering and uh, the parable of the faithful and the wicked servant. And I pray that you go and you get all of those to get as much of this revelation as you can. I'm going to take some time, though, today and really try to go through it. We're not going to read any other sets, any other passage. You can go and read Peter on your own, but we're going to just uh, we're going to reference it as we understand how Jesus uses two parables in Matthew 24 to connect the days of Noah revelation together. So let's pray. Father, I thank you. I pray you bless everybody under the sound of my voice. Let the word become wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of your son. Spiritual seed sown, producing in our body, mind, will, and emotion. Transforming us by the renewing of our mind. Conforming us to the image of Christ. Growing us up in the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. God, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Matthew chapter 24, we'll start in verse 43. But this know, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would have not suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in an hour, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, 
whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Fairly I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, then the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and he and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, as a point before I really start to explain the parable of the faithful and the wicked servant, is what we talked about yesterday is two in the field, one taken, one left. And I said there's really two ways to understand it. I said there's the one understanding that people have about uh the one that is taken is taken in the rapture. You know, Jesus taking his people. And I said, that's where I more lean to that understanding. And then I said, but some people believe that the one is taken is taken in judgment. And they link it to this parable today where it's talking about the thief coming into the house. And, and they're saying, in an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh the same way it happened before. And a, a thief is not one who comes... Uh, to give but comes to take and destroy you know and and that's where people use the understanding of the two one left one taken is for judgment and i want you to understand it that's why i told you yesterday i don't really like to argue that point because it produces the same thing if the one is taken is you know going up to heaven rapture amazing if it's going up to judgment you know it's it produces the same response about you don't know the day, the day or the hour, but you must be prepared and you must walk out your purpose in the process. It produces the same exact response in either one of those understandings. So that's why I don't like to argue that with people. I'd rather just remain faithful unto the Lord in it. Now, let's take some time and let's go through this parable a little bit in detail. Uh, obviously, like I said, I've taught this many times before, so I've got way more teaching on this if you'd like to go into it. But let's talk about this parable of the faithful and the wicked servant. For in an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. And we've already talked about this, but I'm just going to reiterate the point again. Is that when it says in an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh, a lot of people have gotten into error in the way they say, well, you don't know the day or the hour. And because we don't know the day or the hour, we don't have to prepare. And that's what I want you to understand is what Jesus calls the wicked servant. I mean, that's the part of being wicked. It, it, it doesn't just say that you're unlearned. It doesn't say you're, you're, you're off in error. He calls you wicked. Who's the faithful and the wise servant? But then the, the one that says that the Lord delays it, God calls evil. I mean, I mean, we could use the word evil or we could use the word wicked. Either one. But God calls that evil. God calls it evil to not prepare yourself as he has told you to be prepared. And, and there's a lot of people that don't have that type of understanding on the fact that God calls it evil to not prepare yourself. So we already made that point before that Jesus said you are to know the events, you are to know the signs, you are to be understood of the generation, to know that you're in it, even though you aren't presumptuous about knowing the exact day he comes, which means if you see somebody online that says, this is the day Jesus is coming back, just don't listen to them, pray for them because they're stupid, they're probably going to hell, so pray for God to bring salvation in their life. We're going to pray for those people. We're not going to curse them. We're going to bless them. We're going to pray God touches them because we already know they're on the path to hell. We ain't got to help them in that process. They'll get there on their own. Uh, you know, if you're going to go to hell, you're going by yourself. I'm not going with you. So I'm going to pray for you that God saves you because you're just stupid. Uh, that might sound kind of harsh, but I'm being very serious right now. Like this is what I want. Like don't argue with those people. You ain't got to argue with them. You ain't got to fight with them. Just don't listen to them and pray God touches them. You need this. The only thing that's going to get that devil out of them is the spirit of God touching them or them coming to their senses. And that's a, a pretty bold statement, but I'm, I'm being very serious when I talk about this right now. Now, let's talk about this other part. Let's, 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 let's go into this parable and talk some in detail. 
God says you are faithful and you are wise. If the Lord made you ruler and you do this, when he comes to find you so doing, that's important because this theology that's in the body of Christ as a whole means what you do doesn't matter. But what you do has eternal consequences. Now, you don't earn your salvation, but remaining faithful and not falling away is eternal consequence. Because you can get born again and give your life to God and turn around and denounce Him and go to hell if you want to. You can make that choice, and there will be a lot of people doing that. The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. People will leave the body of Christ. The great falling away is a biblical sign of the time of the same magnitude as the greatest biblical sign of the time, the abomination of desolation. This is not a secondary point. This is a primary importance right here. That's why, I, that's why I'm stressing this so much. For you to make decisions, be resolved about your choice to remain faithful and to not fall away. It is, it, it's vitally important to your eternity. Your eternal destination is going to be very much ruled on the scales of whether you stay faithful or not. So you have a responsibility. We're going to get to that in just a second. But he said, I will make you ruler over all my goods. You are faithful on the earth. You are wise in the way you steward what I gave you. He goes, I will make you ruler over all my goods. Now this is an understanding of eternal rewards. When I come back, how you acted on earth is how you will receive later. We're not going to be on harps or on clouds playing harps for all of eternity. There is roles. There is jobs. We are going to rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. Your position later will determine and will be based on your obedience now. Your, your actions matter. They do matter. A lot of people say, well, it's just my body. It's just the earth. You know, there is grace. Yes, there is grace, but that is no allowance for sin. That's why you need to wage war against sin and ungodliness. You need to become faithful and resolved in being a steward that is obedient to the Lord. God says, go, you go. And people look at me all the time. They say, you just got such great faith and you're just so radical. No, I'm doing the bare minimum because that's what God said do. That's the minimum. That's not, that's not all of it. I haven't given my life up as a martyr. That's the greatest I haven't gone all the way. Honestly, when I look at my life, I think I'm doing just the minimum of what God has told me to do. Yet some people see it as great faith. It's not great faith. It's the minimum. It's remaining faithful in obedience. It's the minimum. It's required in stewards that one be found faithful. It's what's required of you. It's reasonable service to be transformed into the image of Christ. It's reasonable it's the ba it's the minimum. It's the basics. It's 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 not radical. People are like, "Well, that's, that's you're a pastor and I'm this and that." You know, it's no. It's for everybody. It's for everybody to participate in, not just for the guys that lead churches. Not for the missionaries and the evangelists. It's for everybody. So he talks about eternal rewards. I love that part of the parable. That the rewards of eternity influence the obedience on the earth. Knowing that I'll receive later. Storing up treasure there is why I act how I do now. It matters. But then there's what God calls the evil or the wicked servant. Now, the evil servant is pretty powerful because he falls away. He goes and he drinks with the drunken and all these things. And when the master returns, he's cut asunder. He's given up his role. And that's where most people admit God is not choosing who goes to heaven and who goes to hell. You are either faithful in your actions to remain faithful or you're evil when you denounce and walk away from it because you see a delay. You see a delay. 
Now, here's what I want to talk about today. I've got many sermons on this, so I'm not going to take a long period of time today, but I want to talk about long suffering. The word long suffering. The word long suffering means God's ability to endure adversity. When man is evil against God, God being long-suffering to not judge immediately. That's what long-suffering is all about. There is a lot of people that misunderstand the long-suffering of God for a delay. Well, why is God not back yet? Why is he delaying? And then they go like the evil servant and they fall away and they do what they do. God is not delaying. God is never delayed. God is always right on time. God's never in a delay. God's long-suffering. Okay, well, what does long-suffering have to do with this? Well, this is this revelation, this great revelation of the days of Noah and the long-suffering of God tied together with the parable of the the parable of the fig tree all of it goes together with what Jesus taught before called biblical signs of the times this is why you have to read Matthew 24 in context and you have to put all of it together so let's put all of it together real fast this is the faithful servant the one whom the Lord has given place in his house to do you have a role okay so we got a role to do in the space of time in which the events unfold and the biblical signs of the time start to take place the beginning of sorrows happens and then they grow deeper they grow more extreme to the where the love of many will even wax cold people will become outraged in their emotions and And they will rage with anger. They will become psychotic. That's what it's taught. Love of many waxing cold. Waxing cold is people becoming psychotic. Unable to control their emotion. And also, you also see the abomination of desolation take place. With all of the understanding of the biblical signs of the times taking place, then he says, don't be deceived. Of my return, I'll come as the light comes over the sky from the east to the west. He goes, you will see me. Don't follow anybody else. You will see me. And when I come, I will rapture my church. Now listen to exactly what your role is. Listen, the two parables, the parable of the fig tree and the parable of the faithful and the evil servant, is rooted in the actual truth sandwiched between them. The parables themselves are very powerful. Parable of the fig tree, the understanding of biblical signs of the times, being people that know, so that you know if you're in the generation or not. Well, you're not supposed to know the day or the hour. Correct. That's the very next verse. But before that verse, you are to know if you're in the generation. Don't be presumptuous that you know the exact day, but understand the time. Oh, by the way, Don't be one who thinks that it is a delay. This is one of the greatest truths I could ever tell anybody. There is no delays in the kingdom of God. It is the evil servant that says, my Lord delayeth. The faithful servant never says it, and he's experiencing the same exact thing. The faithful servant and the evil servant are experiencing the same period of time in which the Lord has left and the Lord then returns. But the difference is what they perceive, how they see that timetable. Do they see it as a time of long suffering or do they see it as a time of delay? If it is a delay, then it doesn't matter what I do because obviously he's not coming back. That's the evil servant. That's the one who goes off into sin. But you have the other servant, the faithful, who inside of the time period from his going until his coming again was faithful and wise in the way in which he stewarded rulership of the house. That's important. Because in between 
seeing the signs and knowing that you're in the generation and his coming, there's what we call the days of Noah. And Peter says it was the long suffering of God in the days of Noah. Now, why is long suffering so important? What is God long suffering to? People. God is enduring the adversity of people because man hates God. God hasn't killed everybody yet. God hasn't judged everybody yet because it's on a timetable. I want you to understand this. I really want you to get this. God wants all men to be saved. And God wants the environment cultivated where man at the deepest level of the heart will be able to choose him or not. That's the signs. That's the environment being cultivated. And then he says to his faithful servant, he says to you, he says to me, be faithful and wise. Well, how do I become faithful and wise if I always see it as a delay? There's a whole bunch of the body of Christ that says, God keeps delaying. Bless. He's not delaying. If you keep saying that God's delaying things in your life, you're evil. I'm just being blunt with you. You're evil because you don't understand what God has said. Being evil is not just being sinful. Being evil is the fact that God said it and you're going against what God said. God said, I'm not delaying. And you say, you're delaying. You're going in complete contradiction to God's word. God says, I told you when I was coming. People are like, we don't know when he's coming. Yes, you do. The parable of the fig tree. Study the signs. And then you know if you're in the generation. You don't know exactly what day. You won't know that until the abomination of desolation takes place. Then you know the day, 1260 days after that. But the minute it happens, the minute that it takes place, then you'll know. But until then, you just know you're in the generation. A generation in the Bible is up to 100 years. You could be 60 years from the Lord coming back, but you see the signs. You see them increasing. You know you're in the generation. I think we're either in the generation or it's coming in the next one or two. I mean, I think it's coming quick. So we see the signs increasing. The biblical signs of the time starting to increase. Okay, well, we got signs increasing, so we know we're in the generation. We don't know exactly when he's coming back, But what is our part to play? Because we are either one of two things. We're either faithful or we're evil. If we're evil, we see it as a delay and we live as we want. And a lot of the body of Christ is doing that. A lot of people have fallen away from the body of Christ. Well, if God's not coming back, then it doesn't matter what I do. I'll go live in sin, eat, drunk, be merry, and do what I want to do. God's going to come back and you're going to be like, man, I wasn't ready. Just as in the days of Noah. Eating and drinking, marrying and giving a marriage. We're going to see next week, parable of ten virgins. People weren't ready for his coming, even though he said it. If you would study it and you would know it, you'd know if you were in the generation or not. But the part about the faithful servant that I want you to see is that the faithful servant was faithful over his role and what he did in the house. What do you do? Days of Noah. If you see it as long-suffering, If you see God doing everything he can to get man to choose him, that's what God wants. God wants everybody to get saved. So he's extending this timetable and he's making the time of history as a point of long suffering. He's going through all of the adversity of so many people on the earth that hate God because he knows that there will be the people that will actually love God and choose him and come in. Parable of the wheat and the tares, rising at the same time. There'll be a great falling away. Evil servants. But there will be a great ingathering, great harvest, people coming into the fold. And that's the environment. But there is one piece of revelation. It's what do you do? What do I do in the process? We live as the days of Noah. And Noah was a preacher of righteousness. This is what the faithful servant is all about. The parable of the faithful and the, and the faithful and the evil servant is about the role you play as a believer in the process throughout the plan of God being unfolded. 
It is walking in your divine purpose and it is preaching the word of God. I'm not saying preaching meaning you're a pastor on a stage. I'm talking about the way, the way you share biblical truth with others. Might be with your family, might be in your workplace, marketplace, whatever it may be. It may be with one person, two people, a thousand. It might, have, might be an evangelist with a million people in front of you. The faithful servant is the one that looks and says, God has given me this. And we're going to talk about it next week when we talk about the parable of the talents. God has ordained this talent in my life. How do I steward this until his return? You ready? Whether the response is there or not. Even if nobody responds, am I faithful to the Lord to steward what he gave me? Because I'm focused on later. I'm focused on eternity. Jesus takes two parables. You're going to see things, yet you don't know when I'm coming. But in between is your role in the process. What do you do? And that's why I tell people all the time, I, I know what God's going to do. God's plan won't be thwarted. It's in the Bible. I know what he's going to do. The question is, what am I going to do? What are you going to do? Have you made the choice yet? Listen, I've made my choice. I am resolved. I will go all the way. I will not quit. I will not draw back. And I'm not saying I'm going to do any of that because of me. I'm going to do that because the word of God is in me. It's produced radical, wholehearted faithfulness and obedience to him because of what I know about the end time narrative. That's why I'm faithful. Not because of me, but because of what God said about me and who he is and what he said he would do. And I pray that truth has blessed you. We're going to finish here in just a second. I just, it, this truth and these two parables and this main thing sandwiched in between, I want you to be faithful. I don't want you to be evil and fall away. I want you to be faithful. And you need to understand God's plan won't be thwarted. It will come to pass exactly like it's supposed to. And we have a part to play. We are either faithful and we steward what God is doing in our lives and through our lives and we go all the way with God or we quit in the journey and we become evil. And I want you to remain faithful. We're out of time. Father, bless these people in Jesus' name. I give you all the glory for it. Amen and amen. Church, I love you. God bless you. Have a great day. And we will see you tomorrow. The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow. Oh, the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons. The drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me. The sun's not worried about the winter, cause soon it will pass. The light's not thinking about the darkness or the shadow it cast. A heart that's planted in forgiveness doesn't dwell in the past. So why should I be? Cause you take good care. to be more